The eighth time you've played a semi-final match here in Melbourne, and for the eighth time... ...start, he had you 4-1, some break points to go 5-1. What changed at that moment? How did you... Pretty nervous at the beginning, and, uh, you know, uh, I just want to say uh, respect to, to Roger for coming out tonight. He was obviously hurt. Uh, He obviously uh, was hurt and uh, wasn't at his best. Was that on your mind in the first set early? Was that, can we attribute some of the scoreline to you watching how he was moving and taking on information? Well, yes, it was probably uh, not exactly the right mindset from my side at the beginning of the match. I was kind of looking more on how he's moving and what he's doing rather than executing my shots in the right way. And uh, it resulted with a 1-4 down in Love 40, uh, you know, uh, a lead for him. So, you know, I managed to kind of dig my way through back and uh, in the first set. And, you know, it was very important to win that first set, obviously mentally kind of uh, relaxed a little bit after that and could have swung through, through the ball a bit more. So many of us remember that brilliant win you had at Wimbledon last year against Roger where you won three tie breaks to do it. First set tie break, just like at Wimbledon, you went in lockdown mode, no unforced errors. Where do you go mentally in those moments and ensure you're playing your best tennis? Well, you know how it is. You haven't made too many unforced errors throughout your career as well. Well, watch the tapes, my man. Oh, you'll see them. Um, well, obviously, with, with Roger, you kind of know to, that you're going to expect a, a very high level of tennis, and he's going to come out, he's going to be aggressive. My style against his style, obviously, he's going to come more often to the net. He's going to try to mix it up, play short slides, and, you know, put constant pressure and play some serve and, serve, serves and volleys. And obviously, I'm not as natural. Try to try to stay stay with him in the rally and and kind of uh, move him around and not make too many unforced errors, as you said. Yeah, none at all. Fifty times you've you've played Roger. Fifty times. It's amazing. How has he made you a better player? Well, I hope I made him twenty percent better player. My, my tennis and my career. I mean, uh, of course, he's, he's one of my two biggest uh, rivals throughout my life. I've played mostly with, uh, with most of the matches uh, at the Grand Slams uh, against Rafa and Roger. So these two guys have definitely made a, a, a significant difference um, in my mind in understanding my own game and what it takes to really win against them. And at the beginning, I remember when I won my first Grand Slam title here in 2008. After that, it was uh, three very tough years for me because I, every time I would get to a, a big match, finals or semis of Grand Slam, I would lose to one of these two guys. And, uh, you know, it took a lot of, uh, a lot of thinking and a lot of uh, belief to, and of course, a lot of work to, to perfect the game and, and, and challenge those guys on the biggest stage. Well, you've figured it out, clearly. 16 times you've lifted a major title. You're going for your 17th on Sunday. You'll be playing against two young players relatively who have never lifted one, but they've been close. They're good players, no, no doubt. So I want to just go back in, into your, your world for a second before we get on. feels more natural. Obviously, you're more accomplished now. What were you missing earlier that, that you had? Of becoming a, a world's top player and uh, uh, Dominic Team and Alex uh, Zverev. Uh, goals and, and ambitions, uh, without a doubt, and, and, and definitely they have the potential to, to be there. Um, but I think, uh, you know, one thing that I, I was probably At times, I, I was rushing a little bit too much and uh, getting frustrated about uh, details. And so 
perfect human being and a tennis player from, from very young age. That's why we enjoy this uh, beautiful thing called life. We're enjoying a beautiful thing called your tennis here in Melbourne. Ladies and gentlemen, Novak Djokovic, he's in another final here in Melbourne. Let's, let's have him hear it.